What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to have a good old chat about the leaders that are coming around in a new One Piece set, which is, well, Mighty Enemy is what it's called over in Japan. Although our, our set names are not following Japan's set names perfectly. So our OPO3 isn't actually called Mighty Enemy. We have instead gone for, what have we gone for? Pillars of Strength. I'm, I'm going to let you decide which one you like more. But it's out in Japan very shortly. It's not out in here for a while yet. But there's been a change, ladies and gentlemen. There's been a very big change. You see, a while ago, I showed you this blurry picture of Rob Lucci. And I told you we didn't really know what it was. Was it a new type of secret rare? Or was it something else? And the answer is... It's actually something else. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the way that the One Piece card game deal with alternate art leaders has changed. So if we look at Romance Dawn as a nice example, we can see that there is very much a... Well, there's a pattern to how we do it. So if we look at Trafalgar Law with the old chart Trafalgar Law, we can see that he kind of got a zoomed in manga face. And if we look at Monkey de Luffy against the old art Monkey de Luffy, we can see that you've got kind of a zoomed in manga face. And then if we head on over to the second set, Paramount War, and we go and have a look, we can see a very, very similar thing is happening. So if we look at, I don't know, let's go Edward Newgate, because, you know, that's a very, very good one. We can see that the alternate art is a zoomed in manga face. And if we have a look at Smoker, we can see that the alternate art is, stop me if it's getting repetitive, a zoomed in manga face. So we've had this pattern established through the first two sets. But as I've told you on a number of occasions and a number of different topics, we need a few sets before we can really start saying that a pattern has been established. One set tells us nothing. Two sets kind of says that that seems to be where we're going. But you can't necessarily rely on it. Because it turns out that this Rob Lucci isn't some new kind of rarity. It is the standard alternate art Rob Lucci leader. And I'm not going to sit here and try discussing whether this is better or worse. For me, I don't really know. I was never a huge fan of the zoomed in manga face leaders, if I'm honest with you. They were never what I was really into. Some of these I really like. Some of these I'm less inclined with. It's change. I'm going to let you decide whether you like them or not. But what we are going to do is take a look at all of them and take that as an opportunity to remind ourselves about the leaders and what they do as we go. And we might as well start off with Rob Lucci just because I've already shown you Rob Lucci. And then we'll go for the rest in order. So this is your mono black leader. Remember, they all have 5,000 power. Mono color have five life. Dual color have four. On your turn, once per turn, you may discard two cards from your hand. And when an opponent's character is KO'd, set this leader to active. We've seen how good restanding abilities can be. We saw Kid from the starter deck has proven to be a phenomenal card that sees a huge amount of play. So, yeah. It's just got two cards from your hand, which is a little bit of a pain. You're going to need some draw power. You don't want to run out of cards. But restanding your leader to get extra attacks is good. And bearing in mind, if you attach Don to Rob Lucci for the first attack and then restand it, you've still got that Don. It will mean you're boosting both your attacks. Now, Porcus Dace is a leader I am just not in love with. Obviously, as we're going through these, the alternate art is going to pop up on the screen. Um, yeah. This, this one's this one's fine, I suppose. The more I look at it, the more I think I might prefer these new style. I'm sorry if that makes me a bad person. Uh, so, Porcus D.A. here. When this leader attacks or is being attacked, you may trash any number of event or stage cards in your hand. For each card trash, gain a thousand power during this battle. But it is for the battle, not the turn. And you do need to be constantly trashing a bunch of cards from your hand. And I worry that this is going to run out of steam sooner rather than later. Although I'm sure someone's going to make this amazing and make me look absolutely stupid. Moving into green, we've got Kuro here. Activate main, pay free. You may rest two characters with the East Blue type. So it's quite expensive, paying free Don and resting two characters. Set this leader as active. 
and rest up to one of your opponent's characters at a cost of five or less. We've already talked about how good it can be to set your leader as active to restand. Again, if you've attached any Don, you get it for both the attacks. That's a good thing. But then also, you get to rest a character of a cost of five or less. Often it's going to be a blocker that would otherwise be thwarting your plans. I, I can see some use for this, ladies and gentlemen. Resting two of your own characters makes me a little bit sad. It is a very expensive card, but there is at least some potential here. Now, Arlong is our first dual color green and yellow leader. And I don't need to think about whether we've had him in the past. Remember, this is the first set we've had yellow. So any dual color with yellow is the first of that color combination. And we've got Dawn X2 when attacking, pay one Dawn. Play up to one character card with a cost of four or less with trigger from your hand. This I adore. I love this. I don't really like Arlong as a character, although I need to watch a lot more One Piece. But this is a great skill. You attach two Don, but then that's going to boost your attack. You pay one, and then you get to play a character card with a cost of four or less with trigger. And there's a lot of yellow cards in this set that have trigger. And you're basically, you're paying three to play a four cost. But that's not really fair because two of the paying is actually putting them onto Arlong. Yeah. I, I kind of love this, ladies and gentlemen. I, I don't like Arlong, but I, I kind of do like this leader, I'm afraid. But not as much as Nami. I adore Nami. I mean, I've, I've started watching and Nami's just brilliant. I just love the way she just does not take any garbage. That just amuses me greatly. But I also love this leader. This is a great, great leader. This is going to be one of the few alternate art leaders I really want to try and pick up. And yes, I am fully aware how sought after this is going to be. Because I am not the only one in love with this leader. And Nami is also a very popular character. I know it's going to be a very expensive card and that makes me sad. But Nami's got a rule whereby when your deck reaches zero cards, you win the game. Usually running out of cards in your deck is a loss. But if your leader is Nami, you win. Plus Dawn X1, when your opponent takes damage to their life through the attack of this leader, you may trash a card from the top of your deck. That's not a stunning skill. We don't love that. We love the additional rule you get. And there are a bunch of blue cards in the set, which do do a little bit of milling, south milling. And I love it, ladies and gentlemen. I absolutely love it. I, this deck is probably either going to be absolute garbage, and I'm not going to want to play it, or oppressively good, and I'm not going to want to play it because it's too popular and then it's going to get nerfed. But just while we're in the early stages of this set, and we don't know how good it is, I love the design of this leader. It makes me very, very, very happy indeed. Now moving over into purple, we've got ourselves Iceberg. And I love that there's a little rodent on his shoulder. I'd never noticed that before. I've noticed it now, ladies and gentlemen. I've noticed it now. It's kind of adorable. Now, this leader cannot attack, which is a pain. But activate main, Dawn minus one. You may rest this leader and play up to one character with the Galila company type with a cost of five or less from your hand. This is absurd. This is absurdly good. You kind of have to have something like this leader can't attack. Because this, and again, and I need to stress this. I'm going to keep stressing this every time there's a new set. We don't know what's good. And we will not know what's good until we have a bunch of tournaments and a bunch of results to look at. We can guess as to what is or is not going to end up being good. But we don't actually know one way or the other. This is very, very important. But this looks ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Because Dawn minus one and you're playing a five cost. That's, that's crazy. I'm sorry, I just that, that just seems too good to me. Like, turn one, you get going first, you get one Don, shuffle it back, boom, five cost character. And I know that you're going to be short on Don for other stuff, but we all know that Purple ha has a bunch of ways to get extra Don. But, oh my goodness, this looks ridiculous. Yeah, this, this is one I'm keeping my eye on. Now, we've already talked about one black leader, but we do have a dual color black and yellow. That is Charlotte Linlin, the first dual color black and yellow. Not the first Charlotte Linlin leader. Remember, we've got one in starter deck seven. And we've got Don X2, when attacking, pay two. You may trash a card from your hand. 
If you have one or fewer cards in your life area, place up to one card from the top of your deck at the top of your life. Remember, yellow is the color that manipulates life, either looking and rearranging or taking or adding. That, that's what yellow does. That is the whole point of yellow. So you pay two and you trash a card from your hand and then you get the top card of your deck as life. But bearing in mind, I've told you there's a bunch of good yellow triggers in this set. So if you're adding a card randomly from the top of your deck as your life, there is a decent chance that the one you add is going to have a good trigger. So you're not just adding a life, which is good. You're also making it so that there's a good trigger coming out when you lose that life. I cannot be the only one that thinks that's a very good thing. And that means there's only one remaining. It is the mono yellow leader from the set. It is Charlotte Katakuri. And what we've got here is Don X1, when attacking, look it up to one lifeguard from the top of your or your opponent's life and put it either on the top or bottom of your life. Or their life, I suppose. Like I said, manipulating life, not by necessarily taking or giving back, but by rearranging. I.e., if you've got a good trigger, leave it. If you don't, get rid of it, hoping that the next one does. Or if your opponent does have a good trigger... Get rid of it so they no longer have a good trigger. And then this leader gains a thousand power for the battle. My initial inkling is that if I'm playing these yellow decks, I'm going to want a leader that can add life in certain situations or give me extra cards to look at. I, I Basically, I much prefer the Charlotte Lin Lin from Starter Deck 7. And that one does have a skill whereby you can take a card from your life but then if you've got two of your life remaining when you do, you then get to put a life down. And I, I like that a lot more, honestly. Maybe that's just me. Maybe the testing will bear it out. Either way, we've got these new alternate arts. For me, I've got my eye on Iceberg and Nami, and to a lesser extent Arlong, in terms of playability. But like I've said, we, we don't really know very much at this stage. And I would love to be proven wrong. Because anytime I'm proven wrong, it means there's interesting things happening. Which I get to come and make videos about. And that makes me very happy indeed. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think about all of these. Both as cards and as artwork. So go nuts in the comment section, would you? But be nice. And seriously, right, I want every single person watching this video. If you're still watching at this stage, I want you to tell me whether you prefer this new style or the old style alternate art leaders. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about One Piece and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wasi Plays.